Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman. All right, so <laughs> questions as someone who doesn't watch SmackDown anymore. Last time I saw these dudes, they were fighting in a swamp. And Bray pulled Braun underwater. He apparently drowned, and then Bray put his mask on. So this somehow makes Bray the top contender to Braun's title. And Braun, Braun survived being drowned in the swamp, but his hair didn't. Am I current with all this? Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, he came back with hair, but then one day he mm-hmm. just came out with no hair. There was there was no explanation. He just doesn't have hair anymore, and now he's a bad guy. Yes, what, and the, the fiend so, is a bad guy. Okay, and I have so, no idea why. So you just are. We are shown clips of him being very mean to Alexa Bliss, seeing he does not give a damn about her, and she insists they have been friends for years. She begins to slap him repeatedly, and so he presses her over his head and starts calling, "Where are you?" So you're thinking, okay, it's bait. He is doing this to lure the fiend out. And the fiend doesn't come out. And so apparently it appears that Braun pressed Alexa into the sky and let her fall to her doom. Is that what actually happened? Well, they shut the lights off. Mm. We didn't see her land, but yeah. Because we can't see man-on-woman violence. Got it. They can only show us that it's happening and then turn the lights out. So the man-on-woman violence happens in the dark. I see. That's okay, I I guess. All right. So then... All right. So at WrestleMania, there was a Firefly Funhouse match with Bray Wyatt and John Cena. And John traveled through dimensions to an actual fun house where puppets like existed and lived. And then there was time travel and who the hell knows else, what else. Now, when Bray Wyatt is doing the fun house, it's just a set backstage. And Braun goes to the set backstage, beats him up and throws him off a dock. He is loaded into an ambulance, but the fiend comes out of the ambulance and the entire roster is scurred. Well, I mean, I feel like somebody's destroyed the Funhouse set before. Seth burned it down. Oh, yeah. I guess he or did. Or Orton. One of them did. But one of yeah. these arsonists. It's, sometimes it's a real place. Sometimes it's been destroyed. Sometimes it's brand new. And sometimes, again, it's just an alternate dimension. And it's it is, always bullshit. <laughs> it's always bullshit. So this match, we are told, is Falls Count Anywhere, which I guess also means DQ. Oh, by the way, they announced that on Saturday on social media. They didn't announce that on the go-home show on national Fox television. Good deal, good deal. So he had, I guess you'd call it a Haas match. They brawled a lot. They did some power stuff. I will say this. I've seen a lot of Fiend matches, almost all of them terrible, because the gimmick won't sell for anyone, except Braun is also a monster. So the Fiend actually sold this month, so the match was at least watchable. I don't know hey, if it was any good. I'll was say watchable. that the first five minutes of this match, I actually was, was into it because right. they were working really hard. It was a big mean guy match. They were pounding on each other. They were working hard. But man, did the brakes screech on this one after about five minutes. It got so slow yeah. and so plodding. I was struggling to stay awake. So they're hitting each other with toolboxes and going through barricades. Bray, I think, was supposed to get chokeslammed onto the announce desk. He came down on the edge of the announce desk like Rick Rude, the backbreaker, a career-ending spot. I hope he's okay. He seemed to get through this fine, but God, that scared me. So they go up the aisle. They go into the screen. They go to Gorilla. Bray hits Sister Abigail for two, and they just go right on back down. That was the extent of the... I guess they were outside some, but that was the extent of what they did brawling outside the ringside area. So Braun hits a power slam, a slam and Fiend kicks out, and apparently Braun's been watching his Tomasa Ciampa tapes because he grabbed the toolbox and he gets a box cutter. And <laughs> I think it was Gray. It's one of the announcers asked, what's he going to do with that? And I thought, well, he's probably going to slice his opponent open and then pin him. That's what I would do <laughs> if I were this man. But this man is a big fucking dummy. <laughs> Yo, he really is. Braun, There's no doubt about that. It's a false count anywhere anything goes match. And this fucking idiot grabs a big ass knife and uses it to cut the canvas mm-hmm. so that he can do a slam on wood. I suppose. Bro. That may have been his plan. How fucking stupid are you? 
Well, as, as it turns out, he as it, paid right? for it. As it turns out, even stupider than you're making him sound. Because what happened was, he spends five or so minutes cutting up canvas, cutting up the foam padding, exposing the wood. He gets himself a nice little landing area where the wood is, and he stands up. And you never guess what happened. In the five minutes, the fiend recovered and is standing there too. And they look at each other, and fiend just grabs him and starts hitting moves into the wood. What a dumbass Braun Strowman is. So he does like, I don't know, a power slam and two sister, sister Abigails or something. He does a bunch of stuff onto the wood, and he pins him. A fucking geek. The this geek is, of the whole week. Easy. That, that is how he lost the Universal Championship. He exposed wood and then allowed himself to get slammed into it repeatedly and beaten. The he had end. a knife! Bro, he, he had a and knife. He, and he had a knife. He had a and knife he, and he used it to cut canvas instead of his opponent. <laughs> Hello! So, I, I, I will admit, I did not see that coming. When he started put, cutting up that wood, I was trying to think, okay, retribution is going to be like 50 of them under there. And they're all climb up through like a trap door. Or, or something would happen, or the ring would just light on fire. There'd be an actual bomb under the ring. But no, he just exposed wood and fell on it and got beat. I did not expect exposed wood in the main event. I guess not. So, Fiend is celebrating, or whatever you call no, it. No, 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 does. no, no, Vinny. Before even that, Fiend gets the pin, and as nonchalantly as possible, Michael Cole goes, we got a new Universal Champion. Yeah. whoop de fucking do <laughs> Yes. Oh, God. You know, someday, in a good 10 or 15 years, we're going to sit down and do this, just binge watch Bray Wyatt matches. No, just get, Vinny. Just, no, we won't. We'll just get hammered this and This fucking chat this does run. not have enough cheers for me to binge watch Fiend matches. So, after that, Roman, uh, 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 the Fiend is celebrating, or whatever it is the Fiend does with his belt. When Roman Reigns appears out of nowhere, spears the Fiend, spears Braun, does a bunch of stuff. He's wearing a shirt reading, wreck everyone and leave, which I won't lie, I do need one of those right now. And uh, he declares to the Fiend, you're just a freak in a mask, which is true. And that's the end of the show. That is the big angle. That is what we didn't see coming. And that is, I guess, what's sitting up payback. Well, I did not see Roman Reigns returning in the middle of a pandemic. So they got me there. That's true. Yeah, I presume he's getting the title shot of the next show, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out tomorrow.